Hello learners, uh, today we are going to meet in another important topic in education psychology that is exploring education psychology. So in my presentation I am going to cover the meaning, definition and concept of education psychology, historical uh, background about uh, how that education psychology developed over a period of time and then different methods of education psychology and research used in education psychology. These are the topics I am going to cover in my presentation. First, we will uh, see what is education. Um, and why we have to see education? Because education psychology has two important terms. One is psychology, another one is education. First, we will look into that what is education. Um, to understand the concept of education, we have to look into the different uh, definitions given by experts. Then we can be able to get an idea. Our uh, national father, Mahatma Gandhi, he defined the term education as all-round development of body, mind and spirituality of the children. What he means here, the holistic development of the children is called education. And another important person in India is Swami Vivekananda. According to him, education is manifestation of perfection is already in man. So what he is saying in his definition, education is already within us. We have to give the space and explore it, that's all. And uh, the father of philosophy is an Aristotle. He defined the term education is creation of sound mind in a sound body. So don't develop physical uh, uh, component alone or mental component alone. It is an holistic, what he said uh, earlier also. And uh, when we look into that, another important person, Festology, he defined the term education is the natural progressive and harmonious development of man's innate power. So it is a uh, combination of all the definitions given by earlier. In general, what is education means? Education is refers to modification of behavior. So here education means modification of behavior, study of behavior means psychology. So when we know education psychology, we can be able to make change in one's behavior. And what is psychology? And uh, there are uh, uh, many definitions are available. So uh, here I given that um, easy way to understand the concept of psychology. Psychology is scientific study of behavior. It may be forward behavior or covert behavior. The mental process that includes some of the components of mental process are here. The thinking, problem solving, reasoning and decision making and finally experiences. So in general, uh, psychology is a scientific study of behavior, mental process and one's own experience. And here we are going to look into that. We are going to understand the term education psychology. Education psychology is branch of psychology that specializes in understanding, teaching and learning in education setting. It is an one of the applied psychology. The main purpose is to understand the teaching and learning. And when you see the concept of the term education psychology, there are two different fields. Are there. One is education, another one is psychology. We are going to merge these two fields and then we are going to new field that is called education psychology. So in this picture, you can be able to get clarity about the concept of education psychology. So when we trace the uh, development of historical, psych uh, historical background of education psychology, and there are many people given that Grinder is the person, 1989, he given detailed uh, um, information about how the education psychology developed over a period of time from Plato to Thorndike. So in this presentation, I'm going to explain uh, the contributions of different authors. Um, here, Plato, Plato who believed that all knowledge is innate at birth and is perceptible by the experiential learning during growth. That means everything is within you, over a period of time it will be grow. So that is the um, point he wanted to try to say. And <coughs> Aristotle, Aristotle is a uh, Plato student, was the first to observe that association among the ideas facilitated understanding and recall. So he is the person said that association is mandatory for learning. He believed that comprehension was aided by contiguity, succession and similarity and contrast. There are some logical way he tried to define how learning occurs in an individual. And uh, John Locke, in the late 1600, uh, John Locke advanced the hypothesis that people learn primarily from external forces. He believed that the mind was like a blank, was a tablet, which means tabula rasa, that means nothing is there when we born. After born only, based on our experience, we learn everything. That is the point he tried to say. And that success of, success of simple impressions give rise to complex ideas through association and reflections. Earlier, um, Aristotle said that association gives a uh, space for learning. He said that association and reflection that leads to learning. Locke is 
credited with establishing empiricism as a criterion for testing the validity of knowledge, thus providing a conceptual framework for later development of experimental methodology in natural and social sciences. Experim empiricism means we have to empirically define whatever the point we are trying to say, how learning we occur, we have to give the empirically, we have to define. So that's the point he trying to say. And <coughs> communist, John Comnius uh, is an, uh, another important person who contributed for uh, development of education psychology. He was a Moravian clergyman, that is an, uh, Christianity. He, he works as a clergyman. At the first person to recognize the age difference in children's ability to learn. That means we are not learning at the same phase because a person who aged higher learned better than the person who aged less. He also noticed that children learn more effectively when they are involved with experience that they can assimilate. Assimilate means um, understanding the concept. That, that is the point, assimilate. And Rousseau, he is a French uh, uh, philosopher. Uh, his contribution is most in an education field. Um, in France, during the mid-18th century, Jean Jacques Rousseau put forth a new theory of education, pedagogy. Pedagogy means teaching. In his famous work, Emily, published in 700 and 1762, has explained his views on the benefits of health and physical exercise. He means learning should be in natural setting. He believed that knowledge acquisitions occur through experience and that reason and investigation should replace arbitrary authority. The learning must be given in a natural setting they have to experience by themselves. He proposed educating children according to their natural inclination, impulse and feeling. So this is a point he trying to say. <coughs> Festology. Some people consider Jagan Hendrik Festology to be the first applied education psychology also. He was one of the first educators who attempted to put Rousseau's teaching into practice and teach children by drawing upon their natural interests and activities. So that there are many theories well uh, given earlier by Rousseau. He wants to make a theory into practice. So that is a point um, specialized by Festolazi. And then uh, Herbert Spencer, uh, one of the prominent person and philosopher, helped to transform sentiment about pedagogy into systematic theory and method through his emphasis on the scientific study of educational process. He said that uh, um, when we do this kind of uh, learning environment, how much changes will happen in the children he studied and the research findings helps to whether we have to take the particular method or not. That is a specialist in Herbert Spencer's. And Herbert, uh, John Frederick Herbert is acknowledged as the father of scientific pedagogy. Scientific pedagogy means there are many teaching methods that are available. For example, lecture method, blended learning, e-learning, the, the, the different methods are there. He is the person who given that basement for uh, uh, scientific pedagogy. He was the first scientist to distinguish instructional process from subject matter. And there are many people, they know that subject, but they doesn't know how to transform that subject in the classroom. So this, this is the thing he wants to try to uh, explain. Instructional thing means in a classroom, the way you have to teach is different from the course in the field there. So this is a point he given. According to Herbert, interest develops when already strong and vivid ideas are hospitable towards new ones. Thus, past association motivates a perception of current ones. So when you are interested to learn now, that means your past experience influence on it. Herbertarian is the prediction that learning follows from building up sequences of ideas important to the individual gave teachers to some balance of theory of motivations when we learn based on our previous experience and uh, <coughs> Wilhelm Wundt, uh, he was called father of experimental psychology also. Uh, Herbertian psychology led to founding of the William, Wilhelm Wundt laboratory in 1879. Wundt extended Herbert's theory of apperception into theory of consciousness whereby he sought to explain association among the mental processes. Why some people are uh, thinking positively, why some people are thinking only negatively. He want to find out the association. He uh, set up a laboratory. That's why he, we call him in the first laboratory set by him in uh, Leipzig University in Germany. And Tichner is a student of uh, Wilhelm Wundt. Um, Edward Bradford Tichner was one of the first eminent education psychologists to practice in America. He was director of the psychology laboratory at Cornell University and 
he regarded the study of generalized mind to be only legitimate purpose of psychological investigation. He focused on such higher mental process as answer formation and argued that introspection is a valid form for interpreting great variety of sensation and feelings. And John Dewey, um, John Dewey said that practical way of learning is important. Uh, launched attack against the teachers and his ideas. Dewey argued that stimulus and the response it elicit constitute a reflex R and that R should be the minimal unit of analysis and its function should be the basis for understanding it. Dewey believed that individual address aspects of their environment not because of these features process the qualities of being interesting but because they are viewed instrumentally as way of realizing a purpose. This belief gave rise to the theory of functionalism. Functionalism encourages development in mental testing, investigation of individual differences and studies of adaptive behavior. And uh, one of the prominent education psychologists in Kondig, um, trial and error theory, instrumental conditioning we can say that uh, he conducted experiments with a cat and developed a different laws. Um, he is uh, one of the important person in education psychology. He agreed with functionalism but preferred to be identified as a connectionist. Every learning occurs based on connection. There is an one, one to another, there is a connection is that because he sought to explain learning in terms of stimulus response connection. If there is stimulus, there will be a response. He wanted to prove the connection. If the connection is strong, the learning will be good. He is credited with establishing the law of effect. When you give better quality of inputs, the learners will learn. And if you give poor uh, content, the learners will not learn. So to account for the strengthening and weakening of connections as a result for experience. When you feel that you feel the content is good, that means the content, uh, there is an association between the stimulus and the response. The person may be interesting for you or the subject content may be interesting for you. These connections induce one's learning. In 1914, Kande completed the three volume series Education Psychology for nearly 50 years the field of Education Psychology and passed the theory of association with questions. There are a lot of contributions given after also. <coughs> so, um, we have seen that uh, there are different people, uh, they given the contribution for the development of Education Psychology. Here we are going to see the methods of Education Psychology. Methods is the way in which we study or collect data in the field to understand the concepts. So the following are important methods used in education psychology. One is observation and we all know that natural observation and then um, artificial and uh, that be the observation happen in the laboratory. Uh, controlled observations. Another one is interview and experiments, case study, anecdotal record, correlation. These are the important methods in education psychology. So these are the methods used to understand how we are teaching learning actors uh, in the classroom or outside the classroom. And here we are uh, looking into that research method. In research method, th these are the important uh, classification. Uh, based on the nature, it can be classified into quantitative and qualitative. Based on the time period, it is classified into historical, survey and experimental. A research that gives answer to the question, what was happened is known as historical study. A research that gives answer to the question what is happening, the present is on survey, what will happen in future, that, that answers we can get it from experimental psychology, the future study. Based on the design we can classify into descriptive, exploratory, explanatory and then experimental. These are the important research methods. I hope in this presentation you will understand that what is education, what is education psychology and um, uh, different uh, persons and their contributes in the development of education psychology over a period of time. And we know that some of the important methods used in um, education psychology. In detailed uh, presentation, we can, we can look into that another video. And the different research methods used in education psychology we have seen here. So I hope you understand the concept. Um, when you have a doubt, you can ask me. We will see the next video to understand another concept in education psychology. Thank you for listening to me.